one of the worst things about modern gaming is paying for online multiplayer. Especially when you consider the fact that almost all games these days release simultaneously on PC with free multiplayer. I'd almost argue that it's become one of the biggest and most normalized scams in modern gaming and I absolutely hate it. But because of this, all the console providers have tried to make their online multiplayer services better value for money. By bundling in free games, cloud saves, discounts on games and other features. But are these really worth it in 2024? In this video, I'm going to compare and contrast all the benefits you get from each service for the price and sort of determine if they're really worth it anymore and who they're right for now. For the most part, I'll talk about things in terms of New Zealand dollars as that's where I live, but I'll also add the prices for Australian, US and UK. For those who aren't familiar, Nintendo Switch Online is Nintendo's subscription service that provides access to online multiplayer, a library of classic Game Boy, Game Boy Color, NES and SNES games, cloud saves, and then exclusive deals and offers on the Switch Store as well. There's two tiers to Nintendo Switch Online, and the first tier is going to give you everything I just mentioned. You can also upgrade to the Expansion Pack tier of Nintendo Switch Online, which gives you all of that, plus you get access to the Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC, the Animal Crossing New Horizons DLC, and the Splatoon 2 DLC packs. On top of this, you also get access to the library of classic Nintendo 64, Game Boy Advance, and Sega Genesis or Mega Drive games. So in terms of buying Switch Online, there's a couple different ways you can get access to the service. For the base tier of Switch Online, you can subscribe for 1 month, 3 months, or 12 months. And then for the expansion pass tier, you can only subscribe annually. For 1 month of Switch Online, it's going to cost you $6.55. 3 months is going to cost you $13.15. And then 1 year is going to cost you $32.95 for the standard tiers. The expansion pack 1 year subscription is a little more than double the 12 month subscription for the standard tier at $69.95. One of the really interesting things about Switch Online is they do offer family discounts, which gives you up to 8 accounts for one price. So for the standard Switch Online 12 month subscription for a family account, you can get 8 accounts for $60.45, which works out to be about $7.56 per account. For the expansion pack family subscription for a year, you're paying $119.99 for 8 accounts, which works out to be about $14.99 per account for a whole year. In every case, if you and someone you live with or one of your mates is already paying for Switch Online, no matter what subscription you're getting, the cheapest option is to get a family account and then split it, as the price of one annual family subscription, no matter what tier, is cheaper than two individual annual subscriptions. If you go online, there's people who talk about sharing their accounts with their mates and splitting the cost that way, and there's no sort of restriction on which continent you're in or which region. So it's a really good value for money way to get Switch Online, especially if you want to get the expansion pack. But let's delve into what you actually get with this subscription. One of the offerings that Nintendo does for Switch Online, and arguably the biggest offering outside of online multiplayer, is their classic games collection. With the base tier of Switch Online, you're going to get access to 71 NES games, 60 SNES games, and then 21 Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. So for $32.95 a year, you're getting access to a library of 152 games. If you want to go one step further and subscribe to the Nintendo Switch Expansion Pack, you're also getting an additional 30 Nintendo 64 games, 15 Game Boy Advance games, and 44 Sega Genesis or Mega Drive games. So for $69.95, you're getting an additional 89 games, bringing you to a total of 241 games, and 3 DLC for major Nintendo Switch titles. I'll also add this might vary slightly across regions, you might get more or less games, like for Japan they also get access to Mother 3, but this is what's available in Australia and New Zealand. On top of this, you're getting access to cloud saves and online multiplayer, both of which I think should be free aspects of any online gaming membership. One thing I do want to talk about, which I think is only a thing in Nintendo Switch Online, is that cloud saves are not available for all games, which is hugely disappointing. I understand that this is to prevent people cloning Pokemon or cheating in other games, but it's still hugely disappointing that you are at risk if something ever happens to your console. As a Switch Online member, you're also getting access to exclusive games, which at the moment are Tetris 99 and F-Zero 99, which are nice little bonuses to have, as well as Game Trials, which gives you full access to a select game for a limited period. With these game trials, any DLC you purchase can be used with the game trial during that period, and you can continue where you left off with your saved data if you choose to purchase the game. 
This is a feature that I wasn't super aware of and is a really, really cool benefit. At the time of writing, the game trial they're offering at the moment is Auden Chronicle Rising, and it's also on a 70% discount, which means if you enjoy the game, you're able to get it at a fantastic price. One of the features that I've never taken advantage of, but I know a few people think are very cool, is the fact you can purchase exclusive special controllers from the physical and online Nintendo stores, which are all based off older consoles and can be used with their appropriate Switch Online service. The controllers that they offer at the moment are the NES, SNES, N64, and Genesis slash Mega Drive controllers. You can also purchase the Switch game vouchers, which allows you to purchase two vouchers for $134.95 Australian or $148.45 New Zealand dollars, and they can be used for any games in the program's catalog, which allows you to get games from the Switch store at a noticeable discount. So it's a very limited set of titles, and it's regularly updated, but it predominantly includes Switch first-party titles and exclusive making this worthwhile if you prefer to purchase your games digitally. It's also worth knowing that you can often buy a lot of the games included in this program cheaper physically, so in my opinion, this is best value for brand new release titles rather than games that have been out for a while. Overall, I think Switch Online gives you a pretty good value for money option, costing just over $32 a year, which works out to be about less than two hours of work on minimum wage in New Zealand for some perspective, or a month and a half of standard net. And with the subscription, you're getting cloud saves, online multiplayer, 152 classic games, exclusive multiplayer games, full game trials every week, discounts on digital titles, and more. So if you're keen on playing multiplayer or enjoying some of the classic games on the Switch, you're getting a solid set of benefits for a little more than what some companies charge for a month of their subscriptions. PlayStation Plus is Sony's membership program, which gives you access to a variety of features, including online multiplayer, free monthly games, cloud saves, and exclusive discounts and content. PlayStation Plus comes in three tiers, Essential, Extra, or Deluxe, and in some regions that's called Premium, and we'll talk about later why that is. And each tier has a variety of different features available. Essential is the PlayStation Plus base tier subscription. It's $15.95 for one month, $43.95 for three months, or $126.95 for 12 months. The Essentials Package really is the core basics for PlayStation Plus. It gives you access to cloud storage, online multiplayer for PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5, three monthly games for free, which is typically one PS5 and two PS4 games, discounts, free cosmetic content for free-to-play games, and share play, where you can play multiplayer games with a friend as if you were local, and is very similar to Steam's remote play. One of the new features that came about as part of either PS5 or PS Plus rework is the game help feature, which is basically tips and walkthroughs built into your PS5. It's a cool feature, but I never use it when I have PlayStation Plus and is easily replaceable by online walkthroughs, which is what I would rather use if I'm honest. PlayStation Essentials is basically what you used to get before PlayStation Plus and PlayStation now merged and is more expensive. I can't remember the exact pricings of every tier, but I know that the essential 12 month used to be $90 before the merge in New Zealand dollars, and you could often get it at like a 25 or a 33% discount. The extra tier is PlayStation Plus's middle offering and is $24.95 for one month, $70.95 for three months, or $223.95 for a year. Extra gives you access to everything you get in the Essentials tier, as well as access to the game catalog and Ubisoft Plus Classics. Ubisoft Plus Classics is the basic tier of Ubisoft Plus, and gives you access to a lot of the older and semi-recent releases from Ubisoft, with the library containing over 50 games. Some of the games that you get in this subscription includes the majority of the Assassin's Creed series, Rainbow Six Siege and Extraction, Far Cry 3, New Dawn, Primal, and Six, as well as a lot of other titles. It is worth mentioning that Ubisoft Plus Classics is not exclusive to PlayStation in any way, and is also available on PC and can be purchased separately. I think the biggest part of this tier has to be the access to the PlayStation Plus game catalog. The game's catalog is PlayStation's counter to Xbox Game Pass, and originally I thought it was a pretty good offering, but going back and reviewing what's available in my region, it's pretty sad if I'm honest. The sort of big hitters that they had available in my region included some of the LEGO titles, NBA 2K24, and several of the Tales games. When you look up the lists online, they do include the Ubisoft titles, but I did try to avoid including them when talking about the PlayStation's game catalog. 
The deluxe or premium tier, depending on what region you're in, gives you access to everything previously mentioned, plus the game trials and classics catalog. The deluxe tier goes for $27.95 for one month, $82.95 for three months, or $250.95 for one year. Game trials allow you to play a select list of games for a limited time and offers approximately 100 titles, which includes God of War Ragnarok, Persona 5 Royal, and Baldur's Gate 3. Trials, however, are limited to a certain amount of playtime, rather than full access to the game in a specific window like Nintendo's offering, and really is just a glorified demo. The Classic Collection gives you access to a huge library of titles that were originally released on older PlayStation consoles and includes Jack and Daxter, the Ratchet and Clank games from PS2 and PS3, and Sly Cooper Thieves in Time. The Classics library is almost as expensive as the game catalog, so subscribing to the Deluxe or Premium tier is going to give you a huge library of games almost immediately. In some regions, the highest tier of PlayStation Plus is called Deluxe, and in some regions, it's called Premium, and if you are in a region that offers the Premium tier, there are a few added benefits you're going to get. For example, if you're in the US or UK and you're subscribed to the Premium tier, you're going to get everything I already mentioned, including what was in the Deluxe tier, as well as PS5 Cloud Streaming, Cloud Streaming, and the Sony Pictures Catalog. PS5 Cloud Streaming lets you instantly stream PS5 titles to your console, whilst Cloud Streaming lets you stream a wide selection of games from the classic and game catalogs direct to your PS4, PS5, or PC. Sony Pictures Core is basically Apple TV by Sony and is exclusive to this highest tier, and gives you access to over 2,000 movies to rent or buy, as well as exclusive bonus content. The streaming of games is really cool if you have a solid internet connection, but this isn't something I'd personally use as my internet connection is hot garbage. I'm also pretty disappointed to see that streaming isn't offered in all regions, even though the tiers are equivalently priced for the most part. Overall, PlayStation Plus is great if you want to play online multiplayer or have access to cloud saves, and have a huge library of games if you're willing to pay for the highest tier but it's a huge price at three and a half times what the highest tier of Switch Online goes for. I'd honestly avoid the extra tier of PlayStation Plus as for only a couple dollars extra a month, getting a significantly larger game library and quite a few extra benefits with the deluxe and premium tiers. I personally stopped paying for PlayStation Plus since they increased the price as I was subscribed to the Essentials tier and was only really keeping it for the cloud saves, which I honestly believe should be a free service even if it's only for a handful or a limited number of games at a time. Xbox Game Pass is Microsoft's membership offering and has replaced Xbox Live Gold, which was super popular in the 360 and Xbox One days. Game Pass gives you access to a humongous library of games, online multiplayer, and member deals, discounts, and perks. Cloud saves are not included with Game Pass, but that's because Microsoft offers it for free with any Xbox account and is absolutely the gold standard and is what it should be across all consoles. So Xbox Game Pass comes in three tiers, and there's no discounts for subscribing for extended periods, so you pay the same price every month. Xbox Game Pass Core is $12.95 a month, Console is $13.95 a month, and Ultimate is $21.95 a month. The Core subscription is going to give you access to 38 games, whilst the Console and Ultimate subscriptions are going to give you access to 507 games, but Ultimate will give you access to games on both PC and console, whilst console gives you exclusive console access. Though Core is quite a small offering, it does give you access to quite a few really, really good games, like you get access to Among Us, Fallout 4 and Fallout 76, Forza Horizon 4, Gears 5, Grounded, Halo Guardians, and more. The big advantage of console and Ultimate that isn't really seen on other platforms is you're getting a lot of the exclusive Xbox titles on day one. So games like Forza Horizon 5 released day one with Xbox Game Pass, so instead of having to go out and pay a hundred and something dollars for the brand new game, you can subscribe to Game Pass, even for a dollar I think, some of the subscriptions the first time, and get Forza Horizon on the same day as everyone else. On top of getting the huge library of games, with Game Pass you also get member deals and discounts, which includes up to 20% off select games from the Game Pass catalogue, Multiplayer is included in the core and ultimate subscriptions, but not with console, which makes console worth it it seems initially, but if you're only looking to play single player games, and want the massive library of Game Pass games, you can get a huge discount for just going without multiplayer. 
If you subscribe to the Ultimate subscription, you're also getting access to perks, which includes in-game content, consumables, partner offers, and more. With all the tiers of Xbox Game Pass, you get access to all the Riot game stuff, Ultimate gives you access to streaming games, and then PC and Ultimate tiers give you access to EA Play, which is essentially EA's version of Game Pass, but doesn't appear to be available on console. As I said earlier, cloud saves are free, so you don't need to subscribe, and I absolutely love this. At a glance, it feels like Xbox has like the smallest offering in terms of what you get as additional benefits for subscribing to their multiplayer services, but at the same time, you're getting a huge library of games and arguably the best library of games that you can get with any console subscription. And on top of that, if you're buying more than two brand new release titles a year that are going to end up on Game Pass, Game Pass is arguably better value for money as you're paying about the same amount and getting such a way bigger library of games. In saying that though, I do love collecting my physicals, so Game Pass is not really for me, but I can see it being huge value for a lot of people. As a base consumer who's not paying for any sort of subscription, I'd put Xbox ahead of other consoles purely because they offer cloud saves for free, which really should be the standard in 2024. If you're going to break down each of the subscriptions into what they really offer, all three subscriptions are going to give you cloud saves, discounts, exclusive digital content, and a library of games to download and play. But these are at wildly different price points. If you want to get the most expensive Switch Online subscription for a year, that'll cost you $69.95. To get the most expensive PS Plus and Game Pass tiers, it's going to cost you almost four times the price, at $250.95 for PS Plus Deluxe, and $263.40 for Game Pass Ultimate. Even if you went for the cheapest Switch Online subscription at $32.95, the cheapest tier of PlayStation Plus is still four times the price at $126.95, and Core is close to five times the price at $155.40. And if you're in the US, a year of Core is six times the price of the base Switch Online subscription for a year, which is absolutely insane. And I want to point out something with PS Plus here as well. For $130 a year, you're not getting any games. You get a couple of free games a month, but you're not getting a library of games. You have to spend almost $100 more to get access to the library of games, which is absolutely insane, and is still not even their full catalog. And all of these subscriptions at the end of the day are trying to make themselves stand out and seem like good value from what they offer to the consumer. Nintendo's online game library is giving you access to a huge number of games that are not easily accessible to the average person anymore, as they require older hardware or the games have just straight up skyrocketed in price. And even if you're only subscribed to the cheaper tier of Nintendo Switch Online, you're still getting a pretty solid library of games. Xbox Game Pass gives you access to a huge number of titles the day they release, including their own first party big hitters, and super popular indie titles such as Another Crab's Treasure. Buying two of their first party releases a year is only slightly cheaper than subscribing to Game Pass Ultimate annually. And they also offer multiple tiers, so if you don't want cross-platform access or you don't want multiplayer or you're happier with a smaller library, there are discounted versions of Game Pass available. And they're priced at slightly more than a single first party release. Sony, on the other hand, won't give you any of their recent titles. So for example, God of War Ragnarok, The Last of Us Part 2, Helldivers 2, Stellar Blade, and Final Fantasy VII Rebirth are all not included. But Hellblade 2, Indiana Jones, and Stalker 2 will all come to Game Pass on day one. Sony's also restricting some of their biggest services such as cloud streaming to certain regions and charges the same price for a lesser service in those regions that aren't getting these extra offerings. And another thing is their middle tier is extremely expensive for what it offers and is so closely priced to the deluxe tier that it's really not worth it. They could make PlayStation Plus a lot better as a service if they really brought down the price of the extra tier to be a little bit more in the middle between Essentials and Deluxe, as at the moment it's just way too close in price to Deluxe to even be worth considering. So my final thoughts are, Switch Online is generally good, though not perfect, and if you can split it with friends and family, it's a very worthwhile subscription. 
Game Pass is also a pretty good offering, especially if you prefer to play games digitally and aren't fussed about ownership of titles, or are looking to have access to a huge library of games at all times and don't want to invest in single player games. PlayStation Plus is very expensive for what feels like a lesser offering than its competitors. I'd only recommend it if you're really keen to play multiplayer games such as Helldivers 2, which is absolutely fantastic, or if you're keen on playing some of the games in their catalog or their classics collection. So those are my thoughts, let me know what you think about each of the subscriptions and which ones you're using at the moment, and I'll see you all in the next one.